Good morning, and Interopen is delighted to host, with our NHS England and NHS Digital member organisations, the Standards in Action Interoperability Priorities presentation. Thank you all for giving up your time to attend. My name is Amir Merkar. I am a GP and co-founder and co-chair of Interopen. After my introduction, I will hand over the presentation to Dr. Gareth Thomas and Indy Singh. A special thanks to both who are on their holiday this week and also any other members who have just joined in the same boat. So Gareth is the SRO for the Integrated Care Programme in NHS Digital and the CCIO for Greater Manchester Lycra. Indy Singh is Head of Architecture and Cybersecurity in NHS England. So why does Interopen exist? We are a member organisation that has organically grown since 2016 where we were initially founded by vendors. And today, we are an open collaboration of individuals, industry, standards organizations, and health and care providers working together to accelerate the development of open interoperability standards in health and social care. In the presentation, underlined areas have hyperlinks to relevant interoperable material, which you can surface later. Over recent months, we have been exploring a draft life cycle of how interoperability standards might be developed through to adoption, and that life cycle is hyperlinked for people to peruse later. The membership has grown to over 260 organizations, so you can see them all through that link, with 160 plus being vendors. A key achievement is the community's involvement in curating 31 of the UK's first Care Connect fire profiles, which are listed on the HL7 fire server, which can serve as the basis of many interoperability exchange interactions and, as, and are part of the National Transfer of Care and GP Connect specifications. Additionally, for example, Connecting Care, one of our provider members, has recently been sharing how they have worked with their vendors and teams to implement some of these locally for medication information sharing. And other areas are similarly working with these standards. And on the 14th of November, we're pleased to have our inaugural hackathon that now involves at least 30 vendors from Interopen. Our focus of interoperability, however, must always be patient care and clinician benefit. The underlined hyperlink heading goes to our website describing who we are, our visions and our values. And our first value is to put health and social care users at the heart of everything we do. With that in mind, we've been developing a key patient narrative called Michael's story to help us stay focused on this value. So for medication reconciliation, Michael's story describes the information exchange of Michael's discharge medication prepared by the hospital pharmacist flowing seamlessly to the GP system, allowing the GP to accept or amend changes to his medication. For the out-of-hour or urgent care centres, Michael might call when he has an allergy reaction to an over-the-counter medication. They'll be able to document that and share it back with the GP and potentially book him an appointment for a review. And for Michael himself to be engaged more become more involved and in control of his own medications via apps that are in sync with his GP medications with helpful reminder prompts and links off to other information resources. And a narrative such as this was part of the patient thread of the 2017 Interop Summit and it has lots of educational links, website content, YouTube videos are available here. This slide shows Interopen's current board structure and key partner organizations that are working together to drive forward our vision. All our board meetings contents are open and tra transparent and accessible via the hyperlink at the top. I'm pleased to also share today that we have agreed at our last board to increase our vendor representation from four, from the current two to four, and we will be planning another election soon. And finally, I wanted to end my introduction with an important concept that our board has been working with and a key finding described in detail on page 33 of the hyperlink of the Making IT Work report shared and authored by Dr. Bob Wachter, who is also the author of the Digital Doctor book. 
the report describes that health IT entails both technical and adaptive change, and Bob has been quoted elsewhere highlighting that health IT is the mother of all adaptive problems, and that's partly why we've got it wrong, stressing that we don't think enough about the importance of the people. And for our board, Interopen is all about co-production with our members. That is why today we are pleased to be inviting you all to help shape and deliver together the interoperability priorities for the service. And now I'd like to hand over to Indy Singh. Thanks very much, Amir, and thanks so much all who have joined the, uh, the, the WebEx. Um, we just thought it was helpful just to provide a quick overview as to what we're looking to get out of this joint conversation um, in terms of the overall purpose of the session. Uh, so as Amir uh, kind of outlined, it now really feels like a real opportune moment around uh, with Interopen and, 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 and the groundswell and, and the community coming together, um, initiatives such as the local health and care records as well as uh, Secretary of State's very strong ambition around interoperability and, and how we can use the standards-based approach to enable that. So really that's why we were very keen to, to have this session, have this session with this wide group of stakeholders of which we're looking to, to jointly with you cover off a number of areas. One is around um, the key and common priorities around information sharing and interoperability. Um, and part of that is around being able to reflect what we've already heard from the service, be it the PRSB, be it um, CCIO, CIOs, uh, but really to then test that out with yourselves around what have we heard, what have we learned, but more importantly then how do we start uh, and build upon this journey. So really a conversation with yourselves around, well, what are the key common priorities based on what we've already uh, been made aware of, and then also how do we go to look about how we deliver and the ordering around the delivery of these key priorities. We recognize that we can't necessarily wait for everything to be in place, we need to progress, but at the same time, there are certain building blocks and certain considerations that, that we need to take into account. And most importantly, that actually this often isn't just about the standards or just about the technology, but around the business processes and the workflow that, that need to be enabled. So what we'll look to take you through is on how we've looked to try and capture what we've heard so far from the service, be around some of the foundations around information sharing, some of the care processes and some of the care coordination that enables, and also how if we look to start focusing on a number of key areas that will help serve both what localities are calling out immediately, but also in terms of some of the priorities around the long-term plan and the wider digital transformation portfolio. Um, so if we now look to move uh, to the next slide. Great. So what we've tried to do here is like build up the picture. Because um, often the term interoperability and, and priorities can, can come in many shapes and forms. And what we try to look here is to say, well, actually, at, at a base level, there's the need to be able to share information safely and securely, so around being able to have a consistent representation of the terminology that we're talking about, the codes that are involved in the information, so that we all know we're talking about the same thing. Uh, but also around actually having even the most basic level, such things as the NHS number available, not only just at the point of information sharing, but actually at the point of, point of care. And then being able to have a consistent set of definitions around what do we mean by medications, what do we mean by allergies, what do we mean by observations and pathology. And so, again, pointing to Amir's uh, summary around the Care Connect profiles that have been curated through Inter Interopen, which give a set of definitions of different parts of the record and its associated elements. So there's kind of a piece there that, we, that what we call foundations that we recognize that we need to build upon, but also we recognize that not everyone has all these foundations in place and nor necessarily can we wait until everything, everything is there in place. There is then building upon that a set of care processes. Uh, and again, this has been um, uh, if we just go to the next build, these are these then highlighting some of the care processes that people have called out that we need to look to try and enable, be it around discharges, be it around social care handover, be it around appointments and scheduling, ambulance handover, but also about being able to share specific parts of the care record, be it around observations, allergies, pathology, 
and, and medications. So really there's a set of processes um, that use some of those foundations, but also allow us to kind of focus on particular priorities, as I said, be it around the handover of ambulance into acute, be it around the, the discharge from acute into GP, be it around being able to share structured medications. So we recognize that there are different areas that people have called out, and so there's a question really around, well, what is the natural ordering? What is the, um, what's the interlinkage between these things, and where should we start? And also recognize that we can't necessarily try and do everything for everywhere, so what are the one or two areas that we think will give us the highest value, but also the ones that we think practically we've got a clear implementation approach. And then the build that then that set enables, if we just move to the next build, is how by having those foundations and supporting a number of care processes, that can then start enabling us to support wider care coordination. So you'll see some of those priorities I'm sure you'll already be aware of, be it around end of life, be it around crisis care planning, uh, and you'll see the ones that kind of in the olive green that have recently been called out by the local health and care record exemplars around some of their clinical priority areas. And so what we're looking to try and do through this conversation, and, and, and Gareth will come on now in terms of more, more practical clinical scenarios of this, is how do we take this kind of set of priorities that we're aware of, how do we get a better understanding as to what the service is looking to focus on and in what order, and actually how do we practically um, come out with, a, with an implementation approach. Uh, and also, we also recognize that there'll be areas that we haven't explicitly called out, um, but I'm sure we'll hopefully through the community, there'll be other areas that we need to add in, be it radiology, be it pathology, and, and other forms. Um, so really, hopefully, that kind of picture helps bring together both some of the foundations, some of the care processes, how that enables a set of priority uh, care coordination areas, and really now is the question around, well, actually, what's the ordering, what's the route in which we should look to take these forward upon? I'll now hand over to Gareth around some of the practical application of this in terms of clinical scenarios. Okay, thanks, thanks Indy. Um, Amir, can we just move to the, the next slide, if we can, please? Um, so, firstly, just to say you know, thank, thank you for joining us on the, on the, on the call today. I'm Gareth Thomas. I, I, I know some of the, the folk on the on the call. Others uh, I've not met before. But just to say, you know, we, we really um, value this opportunity to speak with the interopen community today about our interoperability priorities uh, and understanding how. Sorry, the current speaker is inaudible. Hello, Gareth. Can you speak a bit louder? I think it's quite uh, quiet. If you come closer to your microphone. Yeah. Try that again. Is that better? Um, you might have to. You may have to shout slightly, Gareth. Yeah. Is, is that better? Can you hear me now? Unfortunately, it's not not much louder. Okay. How about now? Better. Better. Okay. J Jonathan, is okay. Can you hear that? If you, is that better for you, Jonathan, or should we? Much better. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Jonathan. Carry on, Gareth. Look. What I was just saying, uh, Jonathan, uh, thank you all for, for joining us on the call today and, and really appreciate this opportunity to uh, discuss the interoperability priorities with the interopen community. Uh, this is something which really has been given new momentum by the recent Secretary of State announcement, uh, and, and we're very keen that as a, as a community we have a, a shared view around what is important and how we develop these things in a, a structured order. The, um, the, the, the format that Indy was just presenting really came from a, a view that actually what we need to do is view how these things can be uh, constructed in terms of use cases and service need rather than in terms of a, of a program plan, which is why we've taken this three-tier uh, approach. Uh, and again, as Indy was saying, there's a real opportunity at present to, to pull these things through in terms of the uh, current work programs, most notably uh, GDEs and, and LICRAs, uh, and that's something which is the uh, incoming SRO for integrating care. Uh, I'm very keen that we, we pull through and get real visibility of these interoperability priorities and an understanding of how they can 
uh, improve the service for citizens and also improve operational efficiency. So what we've got on the slide here is we've, we've taken a view of uh, Indy's uh, three-tier uh, presentation, which he's just described, uh, and used the use case of frailty, which we are using in GM Lycra as one of our clinical use cases. So with the, uh, the idea that if we built a shared care plan for frailty, which we can see in the top uh, olive green box there, how would this relate to our interoperability priorities and our development of these capabilities? So if we look at the bottom, you can see that for this shared care plan in the steady state, uh, we would need, as highlighted in red, SNOMED CT, DMND, NHS number, uh, and the Care Connect profiles. And what these would mean for that uh, shared care plan for, for the frail patient is that in terms of care processes, again, highlighted in red, you can see that the, the key information we would want uh, within that care plan, that shared care plan, plan across a, a locality in Greater Manchester, we will be looking to have all those care processes present uh, within that care plan. So pathology, OBS, meds, allergies, uh, and the ability for the patient, most importantly, to, to interact with that record. And then at the top, you can say, well, if we had this shared care plan supported by these interoperability uh, capabilities, uh, what would this facilitate in terms of the service? Uh, and again, as an example, we've got the use of crisis care planning, integrated care planning, the facility for the, the patient to interact with the clinical hub, uh, and also for us to, to bring in an end-of-life care plan uh, within that shared care uh, plan for the patient. So the principle here was to say, look, if we're going to develop these interoperability priorities, how do we build that foundational infrastructure with clear tiers such that we can identify use cases which pull through right to the front of the service the need to develop these functionalities? So that's frailty in a, a steady state. Uh, Amir, if we just go on to the next slide. Am I, am I still audible? Sounds good to me. Okay. Sorry, I'm sh shouting slightly. but you're, you're clear, but very quiet. Okay, I, I will continue to shout uh, as loud as I can. Um, so this now, is this is the case in which we, we, the first slide was around the frailty steady state. To develop this example, we've said, look, if the patient with frailty deteriorated and required an urgent admission, what other priorities in this case would be of value? Well, at the bottom, we built on the, the staff ID, and, the, and the, the theory here was, that, look, if this patient comes in via an emergency department, there may well be a lot of staff who are temporary workers or who would need to log on to multiple systems. So staff ID in this scenario becomes relevant. We'd also need an ambulance handover and similarly a, so a social care handover to alert social care services to the fact that uh, the patient was no longer uh, in the community. When the patient had been treated within the acute setting, there'd need to be an emergency care discharge summary. Um, and then you can see at the, the top level, the pathways which will be facilitated would be urgent and emergency care, uh, transfer of medicines on admission, and potentially something around uh, delirium management. So again, this is an example, but the, the principle here is to demonstrate the value uh, and the benefits to patient care uh, from these interoperability principles at the level of either one patient or a local service. So the next slide, Amir, if we can move on, please. The next slide uh, is a representation of the, of the previous scenario at either individual citizen level or local service and looks how this relates to broader strategic initiatives uh, and also how we can actually use current um, in, in implementation routes or current initiatives to bring these interoperability priorities through to the service. Uh, so uh, next slide, if you can, Amir, please. So we can see that uh, what we've talked about here will relate to both the digital transformation portfolio. Um, I think that's highlighted on the next slide, Amir. And also the, the long-term plan. So what we're trying to do is bring the level of the patient and citizen care right up through the digital transformation portfolio and through to the themes within the long-term plan. And on the next slide, we've highlighted within the, admit the example of frailty how the following areas of the, within the digital transformation portfolio and the NHS long-term plan uh, would be reflected 
in our work to develop interoperability in the case of the patient with frailty. And then at the far left and right of slides, what we've done is said, well, look, this is if this is what we want to do, how do we actually make this happen? Uh, and on the right in the, uh, the olive green there, you can see that we've identified several implementation routes whereby our work to develop interoperability standards could be pulled in through into the service. Uh, and specifically in this case, we're talking around uh, LICRAs as to how this may be uh, enabled. But clearly there are others as we've identified on the slide there. And then on the far left, we've actually taken a, a, a different view and said, look, well, actually within the interoperability uh, program, within integrating care, there are some functionalities which are being developed already within that program. And these could form vital building blocks to enable the integration of care and the interoperability to be delivered as we've just described over the last few slides. So here, for example, NHS identity, we've talked about the record locator service, event management, you could see that these are fundamental building blocks which are already in construction, which we could reflect and use within this um, hierarchical demonstration of interoperability priorities. So that's really a summary of, of where we are with our, our thinking around the um, hierarchy of prioritization and how we can demonstrate benefits across that, um, that structure. I think there's a few key principles which I think are important around this. Indy has already described, we don't necessarily to deliver, need to deliver these all in the same order. So there are things which are possible to deliver for the benefits of patients in the service without having all these foundations in place. So we mustn't assume that this is an all or none phenomenon. We also think we need to think about how do we encourage adoption of these interoperability principles? What are the levers and incentives? How do we identify long-term opportunities versus quick wins? What are the things which we can deliver already within our existing work, or do we need a more strategic long-term view? What should be the early target use cases, the early target areas within these use cases? So for example, within frailty, I talked about the example of a shared care plan, but it could be that within that shared care plan, we focus upon medicine integration, just as an example. How do we encourage essential co-production with industry uh, and with service users? How do we get that balance as we try to uh, define our prioritization within this portfolio? Uh, and how do we just determine what's the current level of the correct level of detail within the, spe the specifications that we're building? So how do we get the balance between uh, perfection and something which is uh, fit for future requirements? versus a more pragmatic change and iterative approach and proof of concept. And there will be a point within that spectrum that we need to determine such that this is uh, an appropriate standard to move us uh, into the, 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 the functionality that we wish to demonstrate. And then finally, I suppose within these structures, we've, we've demonstrated how actually you can um, release benefits from the development of interoperability but I think as well, we need a discussion around how do we demonstrate those benefits in terms of the fact that actually what we are demonstrating here is a what we're delivering is a key enabler of this wider strategic plan. So how do we uh, articulate those benefits and how do we actually use that benefit realization to determine our prioritization within this framework? Uh, so that's really a, a summary of our, our, our foundational structures, illustrated that using the key uh, clinical example of frailty, both in the steady state and the acute deterioration, uh, been able to reference that to the digital transformation portfolio and the long-term plan, uh, and also some thoughts around the, the questions that we all need to consider uh, when we're doing this prioritization and allocating resources uh, to this program. So once again, thank you uh, for, for joining us today and, and really uh, look forward to the questions both on the uh, WebEx but also via the, the, the subsequent questionnaire and feedback sessions. So Amir, back, back to you. Thank you very much, Indy and Gareth, for that. Um, so I just wanted to end, before we go to the questions, a little bit about the questionnaire that will come. So we would like yourselves and any of your colleagues who will watch this YouTube clip when we put it on the Interop Summit website um, to to think about what we've talked about today, what Indian Gareth have presented, and share your responses on this questionnaire that we've developed. Um, 
there will be a hierarchy of sort of priorities that you'll come out with. But what, what we want to address is of these foundational components and process components, what are priorities to you? So this is quite personal from where you're coming from. So we'll, we'll cover care processes and handovers, foundations and care records, and also provide you with the ability to give you some, some narrative feedback. What are additional priorities that are important to yourselves? And what are the implementation challenges? And how might we or yourselves overcome them? So these responses will be analyzed and a feedback report collated and shared openly by the end of November. Just do be mindful that um, there is a section on the questionnaire that says that if you don't want to be identified by your answers, uh, let us know and also try and craft any, any answers uh, in a way that doesn't make yourselves identifiable if that's important to you. So we will release that on Discourse and on Riva and through our channels immediately after today's presentation. So we're coming to the end now. Um, and I'd just like to hand over to um, Gillian and Sophie. Have you identified any questions for Indy and Gareth? Hi, Mia. So I actually sat with Gillian and, and Sophie uh, at the moment. So in terms of some of the key uh, points of feedback around um, where it says sharing pathology information. Really, this needs to be about um, all investigations and not just uh, around reports. So that's clearly a really helpful piece of feedback in terms of um, iteration. Um, medication being a clear priority that's being called out. Um, and also, when we talk about the long-term condition work stream, uh, where are we covering off um, the, the transition from children uh, into adult services. Um, so there's a, at least um, kind of th three bits of, of, of iteration and, and feedback around this. Um, there are then a couple of additional questions uh, around uh, implementation, and I think this is, is probably an important one to, to help you get more feedback and chat from the community upon. Um, so the question from Jonathan around um, will this predominantly be a program run from the centre or by local action? Um, and I think that comes to a, a, a very significant change in the way that the approach is looking to be taking around, uh, around interoperability. This is very much around locally driven, locally led delivery um, and driven by, by priorities that the service is calling out. Um, and then facilitated nationally in terms of the co-production around the standards or around the, the, the components and capabilities that are needed. Um, hence why one of the key bits, and I think Gareth kind of came on to it very well, was around, yes, you can have these sets of priorities, also including the points that are made around uh, all investigations and so forth, um, but actually what do the service feel as being the natural ordering of the implementation of these priorities, um, recognizing that we can't necessarily try and do, we can't necessarily do everything uh, at the same time. Um, and as part of that, then that helps um, to really articulate that, that the benefit and the cost benefit approach uh, that's being taken around those priorities. Uh, so I think there's a couple of actions for us around updating some of the um, points within the actual framework itself around all investigations and transitions to LTC, um, but I think in that vein of locally led, uh, locally driven delivery based upon, uh, based upon the priorities called about the service, it's kind of very much now to, to look to get a view around the service, um, around, around the ordering uh, of that implementation. Indy, Gareth, can you, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Uh, just to pick up on that point from uh, Jonathan, around the uh, the role of, of, of locally driven service versus the centre. I, I know you and I have discussed before, but just 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 for the group, something I think is so important uh, is that we have local visibility uh, of the uh, the capabilities, the toolbox, if you like, of, of what is being delivered. Uh, and I think I'm, I'm speaking more here with my Lycra hat on rather than the SRO hat on. But I think what's so important is that the that the localities can understand what is being offered and and being. Uh, developed and that we, we get a, an iterative approach and a shared approach as to how we uh, develop the prioritization and also the implementation uh, in appropriate localities using appropriate use cases. 
So I think the, the, the challenge here is how we maintain that dialogue and that, and that visibility of needs versus what is being developed and get the two to interact with one another. Thank you. Is there any other questions that have come out on the chat? No. Technic there's more of a technical pattern question around, uh, not, yeah. not question uh, as a statement really around around uh, moving from a classic fire approach to a registry approach, which which is helpful. I think we can pick that up as part of um, some of the more architectural definitions. Um, but not necessarily directly related to the implementation ordering. Uh, I don't think there's any more uh, comments that have come through yet. But I think we'd be very, very keen to understand in the light of the vein of that locally led approach um, what, what people would want to focus upon. Uh, just a, one more comment. Uh, uh, yeah, could I, could I um, raise questions? Michelle Durham here. I'm a GP and I work on e referrals at NHS Digital. Um, the, and you might have covered this and I may have missed it. One of the things, there's two things that I think we need as GPs. One is um, hospital only prescriptions. I couldn't see anywhere that you were sharing that. It said discharge medication, but actually hospital only prescriptions can create quite a lot of trouble with um, co-prescribing. I don't know how we're planning to share those. So these are prescriptions that are only hospitals issue that we might have very little even indication that they're being administered, especially things like HIV medication. Um, and um, there was one other point, um, and that's the, the plan of action. I understand about care planning, but who's doing what and when? So even simple things, you don't know who's ordering the 24-hour tape or the echo or other things. So just some insight into sharing who's ordering what and when, so hospitals can see that we've ordered a 24-hour tape, and likewise we can see if they've ordered it. Michelle, it's, it's, it's Gareth, thank, thank you for that comment. Just, just a, uh, a reflection on the medication um, point. I think that's something that, that, we, that you know, it's a, it's a really valid point, and we, there is some ongoing work um, India, and we, we can perhaps pick that up with Ian in team as, uh, and team as we look to define uh, what's being done within the medications uh, rec work. Great. Is there anybody else who has any other questions? You could feel free to unmute. Um, these discussions exist as threads both in Riva as well as discourse, but the key opportunity is now to fill out the questionnaire. I'm going to post that in the chat with, actually, Helen, could you post the questionnaire uh, now for everybody that, in the chat window for everybody? Um, we'll put this on the Interop Summit YouTube, and I think if um, there are no other further questions, um, just want to say thank you to everybody for coming today. Um, Indy and Gareth, and please do try and get these questionnaires in uh, by next week, 